Hello, friends. In this video, we'll take a look at a budget mini PC suitable for installing the Home Assistant Smart Home Management System on it. Its cost is comparable to the Raspberry Pi 4, but only if comparing it to the main board, without a case, disc, power supply. Meanwhile, our Reviews Hero is ready to work out of the box. It features an Intel Celeron N3350 processor, 6GB of RAM, and a 64GB eMMC module. If desired, you can also install an additional M2 SATA SSD, and I will show you this option. Besides, I will talk about some pitfalls you may encounter. Before we start, as per tradition, I ask you to like this video so that more people interested in smart home topics can find it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. Device Type Fanless Mini PC Processor Type Intel Celeron N3350 Maximum Frequency 2.4 GHz RAM 6 GB Built-in Internal Memory eMMC 64 GB Additionally M2 slot for SATA SSD, formats 2280 or 2242. Wired network, 1 gigabit LAN. Wireless, Wi-Fi, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, Bluetooth 4.2. Video, Intel HD Graphics 500, HDMI and VGA. Ports, 2 USB 2.0, 2 USB 3.0. Micro SD Reader, 3.5 mm audio output. Size, 120 by 120 by 22 millimeters. Weight, 220 grams. The device comes in a beautiful black box made of dense cardboard. It arrived about two weeks after ordering. On one of the sides, there is a sticker indicating its model. There is also a version based on the Intel N4000, which looks similar to this one. Inside, a 128 gigabyte micro SD card was found. The box was sealed from the factory, meaning this is a gift from the manufacturer, not the store. Here's everything that was found inside, the mini PC, mounting hardware, power supply with an adapter, which, by the way, is quite inconvenient, the previously mentioned memory card, and instructions. The power supply comes with a flat American plug, designed for an input voltage of 100 to 240 volts. The output is a standard 5.5 by 2.5 millimeters, 12 volts, up to 24 watts. To clarify, this doesn't mean the mini PC consumes 24 watts. This is the upper limit of the power supply. The mounting hardware consists of a bracket with a hook. It is intended to be attached to some surface, such as the back of a monitor, and to secure the mini PC on it with the hook. The instruction manual is in several languages but is very succinct, more resembling a packing list. Externally, the device mostly resembles a TV box, which is not far from the truth. The case is square with a side length of 120 mm and a height of only 22 mm. On one of the sides, there is an almost forgotten VGA port, which will allow using the mini PC with an old monitor. Here we have the most ports and connectors, from left to right, the factory reset button, audio jack, LAN port, HDMI, two USB version 2.0 ports, the power supply connector, and the power button, and the third side that has something on it. Here are two more USBs, but version 3.0, as indicated by the blue color of the contact area. Also located here is a card reader for micro SD cards. On the fourth side, let's call it the front side, there is nothing but an activity LED, which shines with a soft blue light. The bottom side, here are stickers with the serial number and model information for rubber feet, mounting for the vertical stand, and the compartment for the SSD drive. We'll start the disassembly with it. The cover is held by a couple of latches and one screw, quite tightly. To remove it, it's not enough to unscrew the screw, you also need to pry it open with something. Underneath it, there's a connector for M2 SATA drives, in form factors 2280 or 2242. To disassemble the body, you need to remove the rubber feet, as the screws are located under them. Unscrew the four screws at the corners and remove the top cover. A massive heatsink occupies most of the motherboard area. There's no fan, cooling is passive, which means it's completely silent. The heatsink is fixed with three screws. I haven't removed it yet, as I want to check the temperature regime with the factory setup. Also visible here are two mounts in the SSD compartment. For formats 2280 and 2242, by default, the screw is in the mount for 2280. I have a couple of such drives in reserve so I decided to install one of them here. 
This will allow me to keep the pre-installed system on eMIMC, just in case, and use Home Assistant on the SSD. For a smart home server, continuous operation is very important, and with this mini PC, it's especially so, which I will elaborate on further in the review. For the working voltage of 12 volts, there are quite a few options for uninterruptible power supplies, UPS. I decided to use this version, with smooth voltage adjustment. You can find a review of it and a link to the store in the description. It is connected between the consumer and the standard power supply. The output of the UPS has a standard 5.5 by 2.5 mm connector, exactly the same as on this mini PC. And to the input of the UPS, we connect the power supply connector that came with the mini PC. Everything fit perfectly here too, without the need for ordering additional adapters. Jumping ahead, I'll say that the consumption in the normal operation mode of the smart home server is within the range of 6 to 7 watts. In the UPS review, I conducted a test of its real capacity, it turned out to be about 50 watt hours. So with it, the mini PC can work autonomously for about 7 to 8 hours. Now it's time to connect the mini PC to a monitor or TV, as in my case, and get to know it more closely. Windows 10, pre-installed on the eMMC card, automatically starts. In the first window of the installation wizard, it suggests choosing a language. Then you need to select your region. Next, choose a keyboard layout. If necessary, you can add several keyboard layouts. We agree to the Windows 10 license agreement. Set up a username. A password, which is advisable not to forget. But, in case you do forget, in the next window, you can set up three secret questions and answers to them. I left the privacy settings at their defaults. After that, you need to wait a few minutes for all the settings to be applied and for the first startup to complete. Done. Standard Windows 10 is up and running. This mini PC is aimed at regular office use, word processing, spreadsheets, email. Simple, not resource-intensive tasks. System Information Intel N3350 Processor 6GB of RAM 64-bit Windows 10 if you follow my example and order an additional M.2 SSD disk, then you can leave this system as is. Considering the disk's low price, I think it's quite reasonable. Here we can see these disks, the internal one on which Windows is installed, and the empty SSD, in my case, of the same volume. Reboot the PC and press F7 on the startup screen to enter the boot menu. Now there are two options, Windows Boot Manager and Entering the Settings menu. Let's take a look at it. This is what it looks like. There's a lot of different information and settings here, but for the purposes of this video, we only need a couple of them. Go to the Chipset tab and there enter the menu called South Cluster Configuration. Next, go to the menu, Other Configuration. We're interested in the state after G3, behavior after power is restored. On the top right, there's a description of options S0, which is selected by default, means automatic power on after power is supplied, S5, manual power on via button. Nothing is written about last state, but it's pretty self-explanatory. To apply settings and reboot, press F4. Now for the bad news, some versions of the SOIOM2, despite this setting, still do not turn on automatically. I encounter this issue as well. From observations, such devices are sold not in official SOIO stores. I left a link to my source in the description. There you will also find links to official stores, where it's a bit more expensive, but according to reviews, the devices turn on normally when power is supplied. The last state parameter doesn't help either. A mini PC that was on when the power went out does not turn back on when power is restored. In my case, the uninterruptible power supply, which I mentioned earlier, greatly mitigates this issue, as power outages for such long periods are very rare at the moment. For using this mini PC as a smart home server, I believe installing Home Assistant OS, or Debian 12 and supervised Home Assistant, is optimal. There are clearly not enough resources for Proxmox. All the actions shown here are fully analogous to my tutorial on installing the system on the mini PC AC8, and with Intel N100, I'll leave a link to it, as well as other installation options, in the video description. Since Home Assistant OS is available as an image that needs to be deployed on a disk, we need a temporary operating system to boot the PC. You can use the pre-installed Windows 10, but I will show a more universal option that will work if you want to install the system on the internal eMMC disk. For this, from the official website, link in the description, 
you need to download the Linux Ubuntu image, which we will need for just a few minutes. To write this image, you will need a USB flash drive and the Belina Etcher program, which you can download via a link in the description. Run it, specify the path to the flash drive and the downloaded image, and write it. This will take some time. Meanwhile, go to the official Home Assistant GitHub page, link in the description. The current system version at the date of the video is 12.1. We need this image, more precisely its archive. Download it. The archive is small, less than 400 megabytes, but the image inside it occupies more than 6 gigabytes. It needs to be unpacked, for which almost any archiver will do, for example, the free 7-zip. Then, write the image to another flash drive. If necessary, you can use a micro SD card, for example, the one that came with the kit. Insert the flash drive with Ubuntu into the mini PC and in the boot menu, which is called up by pressing F7, another item appears. Select it. In the next menu, the first item, try or install Ubuntu. Now you need to wait a bit. Then the graphical menu loads. In the list on the left, select the language, by default English. Click on the button to try Ubuntu, there is no need to install it. And wait for the graphical interface to load. It's quite similar to Windows, except that some elements are located in different places. Now insert the second flash drive, onto which we wrote the unpacked Home Assistant OS image from the archive. It opens automatically, if not, open it through the File Explorer, whose icon is on the left panel. Right-click on the image file and select the first option, Open with Disk Image Writer. Then you need to choose a disk. Currently, there are four, the eMMC, which appears as Card Reader, the SSD Disk, and two flash drives. We specify the SSD. Double check everything carefully, and if all is done correctly, click the Restore button. Now wait for the image to be written to the SSD disk. This is why I said it's more convenient to do this on Ubuntu. There's no need to install anything, everything needed is already here. Boot from the flash drive, and in a few clicks, everything is installed. Done, the image is written. Now you can remove both flash drives from the mini PC. Then, in the top right corner, press the power button and in the menu that appears, select the option to reboot. In the boot menu, now you need to choose to enter the BIOS again. Here we need the boot menu, the bottom item, boot priority. Here we choose what to boot by default. We now have two options, the Windows Boot Manager on eMMC and the SSD disk. The first one is the pre-installed Windows. It hasn't gone anywhere. You can choose it in the BIOS or boot menu manually. But since we are making a smart home control server, we need the system with Home Assistant OS to load by default. Make sure the SSD is first in boot priority, save the settings and exit. All that's left is to wait a few minutes while the first launch of the new system completes. This is the final screen, where the IP address provided by the router is displayed. You can now disconnect the mini PC from the TV or monitor. Here it is on the router's network map. We see the connection speed. 1000 megabits per second. Now, from our work PC, we can go to this address, specifying the port 8123 after the colon. We wait for the initial setup to complete, the startup window. At this stage, we have two options, restore from backup. If you have one, you can upload it or create a smart home from scratch. Here we create a user, specify a full name and login, come up with a password and repeat it. Location. This step can be skipped for now and set up later. Country needs to be specified immediately. This page is for setting up analytics data collection. I recommend checking all options, it's safe and anonymous. Analytics help developers improve the system. Automatic device discovery in the network. This page will look different for everyone, depending on what the system detects. Done, the system is installed and we are presented with a dashboard with the created user and the devices that were detected immediately. For me, it's a few Google Media players and three temperature, humidity sensors. I need to mention these specifically. The thing is, they work via Bluetooth and connected through the Xiaomi BLE integration. This is the best way to ensure that the built-in Bluetooth adapter is working properly. Let's now check the network operation by going to the system item in the settings menu. Next, we go to the network menu. Here there are two interfaces, wired on the left and Wi-Fi on the right. The wired interface is working by default. It's an automatic mode, receiving an address from the router. If switched to static, we will see the assigned address and can change it. 
Wi-Fi is off by default. We turn it on and in the Wi-Fi menu press the button to scan for networks. Select our network, encryption type, enter the password, and save the settings. After connecting, the address can be seen by switching to the static menu, where it can be edited if necessary. In the router's network map, the mini PC is now visible by two addresses. Connection via Wi-Fi is at a speed of 433 megabits per second. The same interface is accessible by both addresses, wired and wireless connections. And considering that I connected it through a UPS, the mini PC becomes mobile. It can be easily moved from place to place without disconnecting. Another interesting point related to the temperature regime. I installed system monitor platform sensors. For more on this, see my video tutorial, link in the description. On the graph, I noticed that at the moment when I enabled the sensors, the temperature was at 60 degrees Celsius, then it rose by almost 10 degrees. And after I turned off Wi-Fi, which was unnecessary, I saw that the temperature dropped by the same 10 degrees. And I realized I had installed the system monitoring sensors shortly after connecting Wi-Fi. The final check remains. We look at the current temperature, 57 degrees Celsius, load 16%. We turn Wi-Fi back on. The process is completely repeated, including scanning for networks. And we observe the temperature. In just three minutes, already 60 degrees Celsius, and the load, 29%. Then, the pattern repeated. It turns out that turning on Wi-Fi puts a load on the processor comparable to the operation of Home Assistant itself. This is clearly visible on the graphs, where there's a dip. That's when Wi-Fi was turned off. Therefore, the second nuance, after automatic power on after power is supplied, on this mini PC use Wi-Fi only in extreme cases and it's very advisable to provide some cooling from below. For example, a small cooling stand. Overall, for the money, it's a decent hardware platform option for a Home Assistant smart home server, cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 4 and even Pi 3, if you include the cost of a case, external disk, and power supply. However, it's important to be aware of the pitfalls, automatic power on after power supply, and the load on the processor with active Wi-Fi. The first can be circumvented by ordering the mini PC from the official store, where, according to reviews, this mode works fine, and also not to forget about the uninterruptible power supply, which in any case will not be superfluous. As for Wi-Fi, it's best not to use it unless absolutely necessary and to ensure forced cooling. That's all. I hope the video was helpful and interesting to you. I would appreciate your likes. They help promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and tutorials, subscribe to my channel. In the video description, you will find all the necessary links to stores where you can buy this mini PC in the mentioned UPS to reviews and video tutorials, as well as my Telegram channel, which is now available in two languages, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home issues. Join us, it will be interesting. Thank you for your attention. Until next time, peace to all.